My name is Shintaro Okamoto. I'm an ice sculptor. Today I've been challenged to create an ice sculpture in 10 levels of increasing complexity. So today we're making three sculptures, first with hand tools only, then with power tools, and then lastly with use of computers and CNC. Angelfish has been a uh, kind of historical design within the ice sculpture community, and it's something that I think is familiar shape enough and interesting shape enough to really kind of expand into. So the concept of sculpt in itself uh, will remain constant, removing the excess material around the design, refining the dimensional shape, and then finishing with details. This can be approached in many different ways. For this project, I just simply wanted to break it in terms of the lineage of technology. Now this is a fishmole mold, and this is not what we'll be making today. First, we got to talk about the material, uh, the ice. Now, um, we make uh, our own ice. Each machine makes two blocks, each block about 37 gallons. It takes about three days, um, about 275 pounds, and it creates a crystal clear, densely frozen block of ice. Crystal clear blocks are um, made with two important processes. One is one direction freezing, that freezes from bottom up. By freezing ice uh, one direction, uh, it allows uh, air bubbles uh, to lift up to the surface and also circulation of water as it freezes. So by agitating the water, it releases any kind of still air bubbles or impurities that may re remain on the, on the surface as it freezes. First, sculpture with just hand tools. It's the most traditional approach to uh, ice carving. For us, we'll start with a block of ice, uh, have a design at hand, study the design, and then we will literally kind of draw the design onto the ice surface, usually with an ice pick or a little handsaw. So once the design is established onto the surface of the block, then the first tool in hand will be the big handsaw. It's an awesome tool, it's beautiful, and it's a uh, bitch to work with. So handsaw is a beast of a saw, but the design uh, it has to be pretty basic, pretty you know simple, straight lines. Uh, you can't really carve away in, in any kind of curvature. This is really meant to take away big chunks of ice in series of straight lines. So once the big saw is used to take away any just excess ice, the next level would be to pick up the big flat chisels to take away more ice, but in a slightly more nuanced manner. Bigger the chisel, more, more surface you can take away. So as we're trying to still define the outer contour of the shape, bigger chisel, more helpful it is. To work with the flat chisel, you first have to have a basic knowledge of a chisel. And, uh, our chisel has a beveled uh, front and a flat back. And you know the use of two sides will give us two different effects, creating a form that's concave or convex. And by having those two together, we can kind of follow any kind of contours that we're trying to achieve. So after the, the big tools are gone, the next level would be to pick up the smaller uh, tools like uh, small pistol saws to hand saws to uh, smaller chisels. It allows us to uh, refine the overall shape more, uh, and then go into detailing, uh, like carving out uh, eyes uh, or scales. As we enter the refining detailing stage, we just have to be aware uh, of just being more delicate with our pressure onto the surfaces of the ice. I uh, think everything's getting thinner and more refined. Uh, so the tools just naturally becomes smaller. So once the overall shape of the angel fish is ready, then I would pick up the V-chisel to finish the detailing. So the V-chisels, it eats onto the surface of the ice and you can really scribe onto the surface and give a, a, a deep line onto the surface that can really add refraction when looked at and last longer onto the surface of the ice. With smaller chisels, we can hone down into parts of the design, like for this angelfish lifting the, 
the pectoral fins perhaps, or the bulge around the eyes. It allows us to more easily access that area without damaging other areas. We often have to adjust the design we're carving based on the limitation of the tools we use. So for you know, a hand tools only uh, approach, the design would have to be stylized and then simplified to make the best of what we got. Once the sculpture is finished with all the you know, carving details. The rest is just cleaning up for presentation. Look at that. I haven't done that since I was 15. <laughs> Second sculpture with power tools. In the most basic level of sculpting, you're given a material and work within the material. To step up that level, then we want to think outside the frame. So we can bring in more materials, uh, and then fusing blocks onto the surface to make sculpture bigger than the actual block that we were first given. By having the opportunity to add ice, it allows us to uh, compose a more dynamic um, design and allows us to play with more details. So fusing block entails the use of the aluminum plate, a heating plate, to clean up uh, all the surfaces that two ice will come together, so it's a perfect match. At minimum, one of the two ice has to be very cold to bite onto the ice surface. <gasps> uh. You know, ice behaves uh, very differently uh, in nuanced gradations of temperature uh, when it's really, really cold. Fusing of blocks of ice with, with a squirt of water alone doesn't work. So you have to create channels for the waters to go into to, to spread. And then when it's really, really warm, then you have to think about the use of you know, dry ice. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky, tricky thing. So now that we have the block form ready for cutting, we will pick up an electric chainsaw to cut the overall shape. So while the big saw is limited to straight lines, electric chainsaws allows us to really work various contours of, of various shapes. And uh, being a very powerful tool, uh, it really allows us to more efficiently uh, tackle bigger ice without taxing our, ourselves too much. So the use of chainsaw really gives us a step up in efficiency. Just one chainsaw can pretty much take over everything that a big saw and a big chisel would have done in a hand tool stage. The chainsaw itself is slightly modified to cut ice. Uh, the chain that come off the shelf is designed to cut wood. It's got a kickback teeth on it that prevents us from cutting ice um, as well as we would like. After the chainsaw work is done, the overall shape is pretty much there. I would say no matter how big or small the design, we would probably do about 60-70% of the sculpture with chainsaw only. So now that the chainsaw part is done, then we will really jump into level of detailing that we can, we can play with, and that's done with die grinders and specialized bits. In comparison to you know, hand tool only stage, the use of die grinders really allows us to give very refined, minute detailing of the shapes and effects that we want to give to the surfaces. It's a very smooth volume that we can create and uh, even the, the nuanced curvature of the overall shape can be really achieved by playing with these shaper bits. And then from there, we'll probably pick up the needle bits to really start uh, drying the, the scales. And even this, you know, compared to V-chisels, that's again still more of a, a series of straight lines, we can really start giving curves of, of scales or play with different angles of the bits going into the ice surface so that it looks like it's, it's layering of, of, of scales, not just sitting next to each other. Proficiencies of the needle bits can really deepen the explorations of, of the detailings you can give. And uh, you know, I'll probably do some finishing touches with bubble bits, maybe use that to create a nice, you know, kind of a, a, a bulby eyeballs of the fish that can give a nice little finish. Next, we're gonna really explore the most complex design possible thanks to the use of computers and CNC robots. The CNC robot consists for this sculpture, a flatbed with 
spindle that's attached to a CNC contraption which has X, Y, and Z axis that will correspond to different data uh, that comes from the drawing that's done on the computer. The carving uh, process will be done inside the freezer now because CNC machine exists inside the freezer. Uh, everything that works with the machine has to be very stable and ice must remain stable and thus the freezer work. And for each level, I've uh, designated different size of bits uh, that can range from a half inch bit for the outer shape all the way down to 1 16th of a bit. You know, by having the numbers, the, the precision to our arsenal, it allows us to create a form that's really daring and give kind of details that's just not possible by hand. I want to design a skeletal structure and then piece it together with several uh, blocks of ice so that we can give more dynamic overall design to the shape. More backgrounds, more foregrounds, maybe really expand the narrative of the overall compositions, maybe dimensional bubbles that could be coming out from the sculpture, maybe give a little uh, a coral structure in the front, really just you know um, deepen the complexity of the overall sculpture. We can go further into technology. There are 3D carving machines out there. There are arms that you know, create various automated structures now that can finish sculpture completely without ours, us touching at all. But that's a whole nother realm of programming. For us, the use of CNC robot is as far as we take it. People often ask if it's you know, sad for us to see the sculptures that we create that we'd spend you know, amounts of time and material to do simply to kind of melt away. But for us, as I think as a, as a practicing artist, working with ice is quite liberating, so it allows us to focus on the process itself. And also, we see ice sculpture as more performative. The finishing peak is really when it leaves our studio and it's out and, and melting. Thank you, Wired.